It's a masterpiece of engineering. A work of art that flies down the road at 253 miles an hour. Part airplane, part automobile. A rare combination of sculpture and speed. Only 300 will ever be built. Base price without options, $1,750,000. An extreme price for a car that pushes extremes in every direction. It's the Bugatti Veyron, and it's unlike any car ever made. Nothing about this car is normal. Its engine cranks out an amazing 1,001 horsepower, nearly twice as much as most other super sports cars. It has a top speed of 253 miles an hour. Few other supercars can even come close. The Bugatti Veyron is a super supercar. The Veyron is a car whose brakes come from the same company that makes brakes for jumbo jets. A car with light speed sensors to precisely control its own wing. A wing that helps keep the Veyron on the ground. Because the car goes faster than a jet taking off. A car that required aerospace experts working with automotive engineers to build it. At the end, it, it, it was agreed that there was a small team of people. Few of them were working on other car projects before, but a lot of them came from outside and were just excited about this extreme project. And that was absolutely necessary. I think otherwise you would have stopped in the first, first three months and say, well, not, we can't do it. The Veyron wears the initials of Ettore Bugatti. The father of the Italian family that built extremely unusual high-performance cars from 1909 to 1947. Bugatti comes back to life in 1998 when Volkswagen buys the rights to the brand. Two years later, the decision is made to build something extraordinary. A car that would have 1,001 horsepower and a top speed of 253 miles an hour. The way this project started, it was very clear from the beginning that you could not use normal solutions. Normal solutions would never have brought this result on four wheels to a positive end. The very first challenge is monumental. How do you build an engine with 1,001 horsepower? an engine with five times the power of a normal car. Even more incredible, how do you give such a powerful engine two very different personalities? One where it's a beast on a racetrack, the other, a gentle giant that can be driven around town every day. And this engine you can race with, and you can also drive it uh, at idling speed through the town. And in the beginning, I think a lot of people did not believe that this could be done at all. 
It takes the engineers five years to find the answer. Bolt together two V8 engines and create one giant 16-cylinder monster. The new engine is called a W16. The W engine, the two Vs. The W16 engine has more horsepower and uh, a higher acceleration than an S car. That engine is built in Salzgitter, Germany, about 150 miles west of Berlin. Volkswagen Salzgitter is one of the biggest engine producing plants in the world. But in one special corner of this huge factory sits a small room where eight specialists build the W16 for the Bugatti Veyron. The Veyron engine is um, absolutely handmade engine. Hand assembly actually starts with hand delivery of engine parts. Parts carried inside custom padded cases as if they were fine jewelry. Parts machined out of solid titanium, a material you would expect to find in an airplane and not in a car. One thing which we share with airplanes is that we use the same material. There has been used titanium uh, where other manufacturers use steel. The W16 is built with more than 3,500 parts, nearly twice as many as a typical engine in a compact car. Each of its 16 pistons are carved from blocks of aluminum. Every bolt is tightened by hand. and then checked by computers. It takes a full week to assemble one engine. Building the Veyron engine pushes technology to the limits. Testing it proves to be even harder. In 2001, at a tiny workshop in Wolfsburg, Germany, workers run the engine at full throttle for the very first time. No one really knows what will happen. This location is a little bit the historic site because uh, this location we reached at first the 1,001 horsepower. But the 1,001 horsepower number isn't really true. The engine actually produces 3,000 horsepower. Two-thirds of that energy is heat. When the engine first runs at full power, it nearly burns down the building. In the beginning, uh, this test stand here was a normal one. And the first experience we had was that the exhaust system on the roof was totally burning down. And at full load, uh, we generate waste energy that could keep 100 family homes warm in winter. The exhaust gas is so hot that in an early road test, a six-foot flame shoots out the back of the car. The test crew detected that the exhaust gas was hot enough at 200 miles per hour to reignite when it uh, came in contact with the ambient air. So there was a, a six-feet flame shooting out of the exhaust system. Of course, nobody gets close enough uh, to a vehicle when you're cruising along at 200 miles per hour, but uh, still, <laughs> it's, it's illegal. The solution is to redesign the car's exhaust using a tested technology. We decided to use titanium for our exhaust system. It's also used for 
é o Space Cup. But they also need to reduce the extreme heat inside the engine. So they design a really extreme cooling system. In the Bugatti, everything had to be taken one step further. Like handcrafting a single radiator so it would have 600 separate grooves for water to flow through. They do it by stacking 30 separate plates into a jig. Welding it all together polishing it, and then pressure testing the unit to make certain there are no leaks. It takes 15 hours to build one radiator. And each Bugatti Veyron has 10 radiators. But a one-of-a-kind engine will need a one-of-a-kind transmission. So for Bugatti engineers, the next challenge is critical. How do they make the Veyron one of the fastest shifting cars in the world? Bugatti Veyron is famous for its top speed of 253 miles an hour. I think it, it, it had to find an own class, an own, an own league of super sports cars. With 16 cylinders sucking in more fuel and air than any other car on the road, you can actually hear the unique sound of a Veyron before you see it. But equally remarkable is just how fast the car accelerates. The Veyron can blast its way to 185 miles an hour in less than 17 seconds. That's faster than the takeoff speed for a jumbo jet. At 185 miles an hour, the car's still accelerating hard. The transmission enables the car to uh, accelerate without lack of power. This is a very special feeling. You just feel the acceleration performance without any interruption, without any stop. It never stops. The transmission shifts in about uh, 150 milliseconds, which is just the same as a blink of your eye. Bugatti engineers come up with a transmission with a secret. The Veyron has two transmissions built into one. They call it a double clutch transmission. You have uh, two input shafts, one for the even gears and one for the odd gears, and you have two clutches, each clutch acting on, on, the, on each input shaft. With two separate transmission shafts, two gears can be engaged at the same time. To shift, all the car does is switch clutches. And the shift is then only the change of the clutch system. The double clutch concept is why the transmission can shift so fast. The car can be accelerating in one gear and already have the next gear ready to go. It's only possible to do this with an uh, automatic controlled transmission. Being automatically controlled is not the same as being an automatic transmission. The Veyron double clutch system is really a unique form of a manual transmission controlled by computers. Compared to an ordinary manual system, the system is quite uh, more sophisticated with its uh, yeah, brain behind. So it's a computer brain. Just for the controller, uh, control unit for the transmission, it's around four 
uh, normal laptop computers. The transmission isn't only fast, it's incredibly strong. It has to be, to handle the extreme forces generated by a thousand and one horsepower. Never before, never ever, in a, in a normal road-worthy uh, car, you have seen a transmission which could shift without breaks in, in the power. So this double-touch technology was brand new, and at this level of power, nobody has ever done a transmission before in a car. Even Bugatti engineers are surprised by just how fast the Veyron accelerates. It's the first time it's absolutely impressive. Zero to 62 miles an hour. That's 100 kilometers an hour in 2.5 seconds. You don't know what's around you. Your brain is frozen and you feel just this acceleration for 2.5 seconds and then you will cross 100 mark. That kind of incredible acceleration leads to the next challenge. The Bugatti Veyron will need the most powerful brakes ever built for a street-legal production car. The Veyron has massive disc brakes made from high-tech carbon, ceramic, and titanium. Each brake disc is handmade by experts in Meidingen, Germany, a small town outside of Munich. The raw materials are hand molded, baked in one oven. Polished. Baked in a second oven. Drilled. And assembled. The Veyron's brakes work at temperatures as high as 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Normal car brakes stop working at 1,300 degrees. But even the Veyron's massive disc brakes aren't enough to handle the car's incredible power. Bugatti engineers face yet another challenge. Stopping a car that's traveling at nearly one-third the speed of sound. The Bugatti Veyron can stop faster than any production car in the world. That's because the Veyron actually has two different braking systems built into the car. We have the mechanical brakes to the wheels, but we have also an air brake. At speeds above 125 miles an hour, hit the brake pedal and the Veyron's rear wing shoots up to a 55 degree angle. It is very helpful when the car is very, very fast. The wing acts like an air brake, providing almost a third of the Veyron's total braking power. The air brake alone generates 70% of the braking power of a normal car. Together, the wing and the disc brakes have a total braking force equal to almost twice the force of gravity. The Veyron takes less than 10 seconds to go from its top speed of 253 miles an hour to 
to a complete stop. No other car made has brakes that can do that, or even come close. You can brake faster, then you can accelerate. In 2.5 seconds, it needs to accelerate 200k, and in 2.2 seconds, it already has stopped down to zero, which is a very impressive number, I think. It's uh, amazing. You know, five seconds, the whole thing. Even more amazing is how the power of the brakes dwarf the power of the Veyron's huge engine. Deceleration takes about 4,000 horsepower to brake the car from top speed down to zero. In its up position, the Veyron's rear wing helps braking. Lowered, it adds stability to high-speed runs. The rear wing is a critical part of the Bugatti Veyron. But to control the wing means creating something so fast, its speed is almost unimaginable. Speed measured in picoseconds, a thousand billionth of a second. MTS Sensors is a high-tech company in Ludenscheid, Germany, about 100 miles northwest of Frankfurt. It's here where they build a remarkably tiny sensor unit for the Veyron's rear wing. It is the fastest piece in, 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 in that car. The sensor measures the time it takes a pulse of light to travel down a wire, hit a magnet, and reflect back as an ultrasonic sound wave. The sensor performance has to be not only correct, but also has to be quick enough that the computer system in the car can execute the right angles on the wing as needed. For normal driving, the wing is retracted. Hit 136 miles an hour, and the wing pops up to a 15 degree angle. For high speed runs above 230 miles an hour, the wing retracts to just two degrees. And for high speed stops, the wing hits 55 degrees in four tenths of a second. The Veyron adjusts its aerodynamic configurations on the fly. Without the tiny sensor in the wing, the car would never be stable enough at 253 miles an hour. And it would be even worse if it did go that fast. Without the tiny sensor in the rear wing, the car could never safely brake from that speed. Without the sensor controlling the wing and the computer knowing the information on the wing and varying the angles on the, on the wing, they would not have been able to do that. Hegemon Aerospace, a company that specializes in making parts for jets and rockets. They install the sensor in the strut assembly for the Veyron's rear wing. Then, it's checked on a machine made just for the Veyron to make certain both sensor and wing work perfectly. The rear wing is uh, a good sample of the combination of automotive and aerospace because this hydraulic system could also drive a flap system in an aircraft wing. Hegemon Aerospace builds 150 sub-assemblies for the Veyron, including the rear and front frames for the car. They construct the rear frame out of high-strength aircraft-grade stainless steel and weld it exactly the same way they weld airplane parts. All welders doing any kind of work on this car are certified aircraft welders. It takes a lot of time 
And that's one reason the rear frame is one of the most complicated and expensive parts of the entire car. It takes around about 80 to 90 hour handcraft work to produce this single part here. Hegemon Aerospace also manufactures the Veyron's fuel tank. From the first design, this to finish uh, four years. It took that long because the Veyron's fuel tank needs to pump fuel eight times faster than a normal fuel tank. It takes three days to weld together the fuel tank for the Veyron. Two hundred and fifty different parts. Five times the number in a normal car's fuel tank. There are 2,300 different parts in all the Veyron sub-assemblies Hegemon Aerospace manufactures. Each and every piece a form of mechanical art. My favorite piece is this rear frame, the engine mount of this car together with the rear hydraulic. This is a real fancy part of the car. It's a kind of artwork. Part airplane, part automobile. Both come together where the rubber meets the road. Until the Veyron, no one had ever made a production car tire that could be used at speeds over 250 miles an hour. Without finding a way to make that tire, the Bugatti Veyron would never hit its target, a top speed of 253 miles an hour. One of the key parts of building the Bugatti Veyron would be something most people take for granted, but not Bugatti. At the end, one of the key points was the tires. Tires that would be developed here at the Michelin Research and Test Facility outside the small French town of Clermont-Ferrand. It was an extremely demanding technical challenge. You know, there was no tire available on the market, on the market that was able to meet the technical requirement of that car. Michelin offers two different designs, one for the road, one for the track. Bugatti pushes for one tire that could do both. So we need to develop brand new tires, new tires. Big tires, the biggest tires ever designed for a sports car. The Veyron tires are huge. Almost 14 and a half inches wide on the rear wheels. That's nearly twice as wide as a normal passenger car tire. They make each Veyron tire by rolling multiple layers of rubber onto a drum. A standard passenger car tire took almost 30 seconds to be built. This one needs more than one hour. This is a really handmade tire. Each layer must be perfectly aligned, checked with laser beams and a microscope. One more combination of car and aerospace technology. For this tire, we have to put in place very severe control that will meet or exceed the quality standard of an aircraft tire. A set of Veyron tires lasts about 6,000 miles. A set of four replacement tires costs $17,000. Part of what you're paying for is the use of what Michelin calls its tire torture machine. Mm -hmm. 
This uniquely devilish device reproduces every possible force and condition the Veyron tire would face on the road or the track. On this machine, we create forces that exceed, in fact, what is on the track. So it is a real torture for the tire. The Veyron's tires are actually over-engineered. The torture machine shows they can safely run at 279 miles an hour, 26 miles an hour faster than the car. But the ultimate testing is done outside. The Michelin prototype facility has 19 different track configurations spread out across 1,100 acres at Clermont-Ferrand. including the world's most sophisticated wet handling tracks. Computers precisely control hundreds of sprinklers. They can replicate everything from a light drizzle to a downpour. And the Veyron, with its one-of-a-kind tires, needs to handle it all. They run tires are shipped from Clermont Ferrand to Molsheim, France. This is where they'll build the Bugatti Veyron. In September 2005, Bugatti opens a brand new atelier, a French word meaning artist's workshop in Molsheim, France. This is not a typical car factory. It's a unique place where 17 specialists assemble the Bugatti Veyron by hand. For the assembly, we have in total 17 workers. There are some mechanical, some electrical people, and people for the bodywork. First, they carefully move the rear frame, complete with its wing struts, into position to bolt it to the engine and transmission. The car ends up in three sections. Each sits on columns that rise up from the floor. Their tops embossed with the Atori Bugatti logo. There are no greasy car lifts or jacks because this is not a typical car factory. Inside the atelier, they build cars the way you would build an airplane. The rear, middle, and front of the car are slowly pushed together by hand. Hoses and electrical contacts carefully connected. Uh, 
When they're certain everything is perfectly lined up, they bolt the car together. You have to imagine the rear part is connected to the front part only with 14 bolts. Just 14 bolts, each made from titanium. Each bolt costs $100. For me, this car is more airplane than, than a car. Unlike regular cars, there's no frame in the middle of the bay run. The passenger compartment is built with what's called monocoque construction. Just like an airplane fuselage, the skin or outer shell is what makes the middle of the car rigid and strong incredibly strong. The entire monocoque middle of the car weighs only 240 pounds, but has double or even triple the strength of an average car body. This uh, complete assembly in carbon fiber, um, we, we are achieving the, the stiffest and one of the strongest cars in the world. The Veyron is also one of the most tested cars in the world. Before they add the remaining bodywork, they roll the chassis into a test chamber. They fire the engine, and for the very first time, the car's huge tires feel the might of 1,001 horsepower. To complete the car, they place handcrafted covers on top of the turbocharger radiators. Aluminum body panels are polished. And then very carefully aligned and bolted to the car. It takes about four to five weeks from the beginning of the assembly of the chassis till the finishing with the polishing and the delivery of the car. Each finished Veyron is then road tested. Some of them on the only track in the world where Bugatti runs the Veyron to its top speed of 253 miles an hour. One of the most extraordinary automobile test facilities ever built sits in the woods outside Wolfsburg, Germany. Protected by barbed wire on top of chain link fences. It's Volkswagen's super secret test facility in airless scene. What happens here stays here. It is not allowed that airplanes cross the proving ground. I think it's necessary to keep these secrets really secret. Inside the gates sit 60 miles of private roads, including a high-speed oval track with a straightaway over five miles long. We are here in our proving ground in Erlesin, and we have a high-speed oval, and that allows top speeds in a very safe condition. The high-speed oval allows the Veyron to hit its top speed of 253 miles an hour. First, a few laps to warm up the car. Then, the driver accelerates into the next banked corner at about 155 miles per hour. 
Here the Veyron is only using 280 horsepower. It needs its remaining 721 horsepower to reach its top speed. When the car comes out of the banked curve and onto the straightaway, you floor it and hang on. Warm up everything properly and then go to the curve and then after that, the next straight you do it. At 253 miles an hour, the Veyron covers more than an NFL football field in one second. That's more than four miles in one minute. At max power, its turbochargers suck in the same amount of air in one minute that the driver would use to breathe for four days. At top speed, the Veyron gets three miles to the gallon. At that rate, its 26-gallon fuel tank runs dry in 12 minutes. Top speed is measured by a GPS unit on the dash. It's calibrated for Europe, so the magic number is 407 kilometers an hour. That's 253 miles an hour. You have to learn when, what, how, take the steering wheel, center of the road, full throttle, and wait. The car could actually go faster, as much as 260 miles an hour, but it's computer limited to 253. Above that speed, stability could become a problem. Every car, every single car is driven 500 kilometers to find every single little squeak and rattle and defect. After the final road tests, each car returns to the atelier. It now sits in a special light tunnel. Here, the car is inspected and polished for at least two full days. Perfect is not good enough. <laughs> I think that, that gives you a little bit of the, of, the, of the way of thinking you need to do a car like that. Finally, each new Veyron is wrapped inside a protective cover for shipment to customers around the world. People who want to own an extremely rare piece of mechanical art. Part airplane, part automobile. The Bugatti Veyron, a masterpiece of engineering. A work of art that flies down the road at 253 miles an hour.